I save hours every day with Keyboard Maestro, and these are my 10 best macros. They allow me to do everything from instantly rescaling windows to opening apps without using the mouse. Each macro is better than the previous. Up first, we have the Paste by Name macro, which lets you paste any recent items from your clipboard once you activate the keyboard shortcut. So these are the most recent items that I've copied to the clipboard. And now I can easily click on any of them or use the arrow keys and press enter to paste them into the front document. And you'll notice here that any formatting that is in these text items also gets saved and pasted in to the front app. So this is incredibly useful when you have multiple things that you've copied to the clipboard and you need to look back and paste something that you copied a while ago. Opening up Keyboard Maestro, the macro itself is extremely simple. I just have a hotkey trigger of Option Shift V and the macro itself is only one action, the paste by name action with no modifications made to it. So already we can activate our hotkey and see all of the recent items in our clipboard. Up next are macros to instantly rescale the front windows. So I have macros to set it to the left side, the right side, to the top or bottom of the screen, as well as ones to rescale the front window to the center of the screen and one to rescale it to full screen. So these macros come in handy every single day for me and save a lot of time instead of having to manually rescale the front window by dragging the edges of the screen. Coming into Keyboard Maestro, these are technically multiple macros, but they're all extremely similar, so I'll count them as one. Again, I just have a hotkey trigger, so one to rescale the window to the bottom of the screen like so, then I have one to rescale to the center, one to full screen, one to left, right, and one to the top. So they all have their own hotkey trigger. And again, it's just one single action in Keyboard Maestro, the move a window action. And you can change this to move and resize to full screen, left half, right half, top or bottom half. So clicking any of these will modify it to the appropriate settings. And we could also do one to center the front window. So super simple, super easy to make, and they come in handy all the time. Next up is the OCR macro, which once activated, lets you select an area of text on the screen, which you can then paste directly into any document. So this is super useful when there's text on the screen that cannot be copied to the clipboard directly. You cannot highlight the text like this. You can just activate the macro, select that area of text, and it will be copied to the clipboard for you to paste. Coming into Keyboard Maestro, this macro is only a few actions. The first action executes a shell script with the command of screen capture hyphen IC. So what this does is it just prompts the user with the screenshot window and saves whatever screenshot is taken directly to the clipboard. And then you'll notice there's an if statement here, which says that if the escape button is pressed, then the macro is canceled. So if I press escape while the screenshot window is up at any point, then the screenshot is not taken and the macro is canceled. And then finally, because this shell script saved an image to the clipboard, the last action just takes that image, whatever is now at the clipboard, filters it with Apple text recognition, although you could select another language here as well if your text is in a non-English language, and then saves those results directly to the system clipboard where you can then paste it. So I use this macro on a daily basis and it saves a ton of time from having to manually type text that I want to capture quickly. I know Keyboard Maestro can be complicated, so you can sign up for a free coaching call with me using the link at the top of the description, where I'll show you how to set up all the macros from this video and help you make custom macros to speed up your workflow. By the way, you can also download all of the macros from this video down in the description. Next, I wanna show you some text expansion macros, which also save a lot of time. So I have them set to type string 
triggers in Keyboard Maestro. So when I type certain characters out, they get expanded into different text. So I have one D1 to insert the current date. If I do D2, it expands it into a date of a different format without the day of the week. And D3 does it in a different format as well. So in Keyboard Maestro, again, these are actually multiple macros, but I will include them as one macro for the sake of this video since they're all very similar. So for the first one, the type email macro, I came here and added a typed string trigger, and you can type any text here, but I like to do things that start with a semicolon because I'm unlikely to accidentally type that out, and you would just enter that here. And I set the case to not matter so that if I type something like email with caps locks on, it also works. And then the action itself is just an insert text by typing action. And you can enter whatever text you want in this box. So once you type out this string of characters here, it gets deleted and this text gets typed instead. The macros to insert the current date are very similar as well. I have a type string trigger of semicolon D1. Again, the case does not matter. And then instead of having certain text in this box, I use a token of the ICU date time with a certain format. I made an entire video about type string triggers where I explained what this formatting actually means. But for now, you should know that if you just type out this exact set of characters, the percent ICU date percent, and then some format like month month slash day day slash year year year, then that will be appropriately expanded into the current date. Up next, I have macros that will instantly reformat whatever text I have highlighted. So I have one to set the text to sentence case, one to set it to title case, one to set it all to uppercase, and one to set it all to lowercase. So coming into Keyboard Maestro, each of these macros has a certain trigger, like control option one, two, three, or four. And the actions are very simple as well. First, I have an action to type command C to copy whatever text is highlighted. And then I use the filter action and I filter the system clipboard with lowercase and set it back to the source. So that means it sets it back to the system clipboard. And then I have an action to paste our newly formatted lowercase text. And then I have two actions that delete the most recent clipboard. What these actions do is they get rid of the text that we copied, and then they also remove the text that was newly formatted from the clipboard. You don't need to add these, but if you want to have a cleaner system clipboard, then I would recommend including them. The other macros are very similar. The only thing that changed in this case was changing lowercase to uppercase. The same goes for the sentence case macro. The only one that is slightly different is the title case macro, which I have set to filter the system clipboard to lowercase before changing it to title case. The reason for that is that something like this would already be considered title case if we didn't set the text to lowercase first, but instead my title case macro sets everything to lowercase and then capitalizes the first letters of the words. Next up is the text to speech macro, which will speak whatever text you have highlighted. So when I run it, it sounds like this. This is an example sentence. This is another one. This macro can be really useful to catch grammatical errors in emails, for instance. Really useful when I'm writing emails and I just want to hear the text spoken out loud so my brain doesn't miss any small grammatically errors. And in this case, I heard that grammatical was incorrect and I can easily make that change. In Keyboard Maestro, this macro is only two actions. I have a hotkey trigger of Option Shift T and then an action to type Command C to copy whatever text is highlighted. And then I have the Speak Text action. You can select the speed that the text is spoken at as well as the voice. And then here is the text that gets spoken, which in our case, we want to set to the system clipboard token, 
which contains the text that we most recently copied. I personally like it set to speak pretty quickly, but you can change this speed as desired. The next macro is one to instantly search the highlighted text on Google. Whatever text you have highlighted, whether it's a single word or multiple words, it will instantly search it in a new tab on Google, even if that is not the front tab. In Keyboard Maestro, this macro has a few different actions. First, I have a hotkey set to Command Option V. Then it copies the current text that's highlighted. And then I'll come back to this action in, in a second, but assuming the browser is open, it will do Command T to open a new tab. It will type Command T to paste the clipboard and then it will type enter to run that search. So this action here, all it does, it says that if the browser, which in my case is Brave browser, is not at the front, then it will execute a macro to open the browser before opening a new tab and then pasting that item in. So this macro here is actually the next one on my list to instantly open apps. So if I have multiple tabs open or multiple windows open of a window and I press that macro more than once, then it will toggle between open windows of that application. This is one of my all time most used macros and I have similar macros to open other apps like Obsidian, Keyboard Maestro, and all of my most commonly used apps. So the macro itself looks like this. I have a hotkey for Brave specifically of Control Option X. And then I have an if condition that says, if Brave browser is at the front, then execute this action here, which is the bring a window to the front action. And all you have to do is change this to the window with window index of window count, which returns the number of open windows of that application. So essentially what this action does is it brings the next open window to the front for your application. And if that application is not at the front, then I have an action, which is just the activate a specific application action, and I have it set to brave browser. So all three of these should be the same application. And now whenever we toggle it, it will open existing windows of Brave browser. Next up is one of my all time favorite macros, which lets me instantly change tabs using just my left hand. And this works in the Finder, it works in Brave, my browser, it works in Obsidian, basically any app that has tabs, you can instantly change tabs with a simple hotkey trigger. In Keyboard Maestro, these are two simple macros. I have them set to hotkey triggers of Option Shift X to switch to the left tab and Option Shift C to switch to the right tab, which I can easily access with my left hand on the keyboard. And what they do is type a keystroke of Command Option Left Arrow which in most applications will change to the left tab and command option right arrow to switch to the right tab. Now in some applications like Obsidian, you'll have to manually specify that keyboard shortcut. So I had to add a keyboard shortcut of command option right arrow to go to the next tab or command option left arrow to go to the previous tab in order for these macros to work. But once you set the appropriate hotkeys in relevant applications, they are extremely powerful and save a lot of time instead of having to use the mouse to click to different tabs. The final macro I'll show is one that I've used over 10,000 times, and it looks like this. So I press a keyboard shortcut of Command E when I'm in my browser, and then I can press Enter on any of the bookmarks that pop up and instantly open them in a new tab. So you'll notice here that I have three bookmarks on this browser, and when I do the shortcut Command E, they all appear in this list, and I can either press Enter, which will replace the current tab with that bookmark. I can press Shift and Enter to open it in a new tab, and I can press Option Enter to open 
in an incognito window. And finally, I can press Option and Shift Enter to open that website in a new tab in an incognito window. If I go to a new website that I want to bookmark and I add it as a bookmark using the bookmark feature, then that website will now appear within my bookmarks list. I can also easily search for bookmarks to access them more quickly, which is very useful if you have dozens or hundreds of bookmarks like I normally do. And the list will also update automatically if you delete bookmarks. So I deleted this website from my bookmarks and now it is gone from this search bar. In Keyboard Maestro, the macro itself is actually quite complicated, so I won't explain in detail how it works here. But essentially, there is a script that captures your browser bookmark file and uses that to prompt you with a list of all of your bookmarks. At some point, I plan to make an entire video explaining how this macro works, though. But if you made it this far into the video, be sure to subscribe for more cool content, and I'll see you in the next one.